Yes, uh, my name is William. I'm an independent filmmaker and researcher at Google. In I live in New York, um, but I am also currently um, working in Minneapolis, Minnesota, on a documentary following the lives of some community organizers in the wake of George Floyd's murder. Um, so, if you all are familiar with George Floyd and um, what happened in the uprising in 2020, um, I'm, I'm working on that as well uh, in Minneapolis. So, but to the point here, um, I'm just gonna talk a bit about my experience. And again, this is coming from a perspective of just a black man in America. And these are my kind of, this is my story of, of what, how I came to work in Romania and uh, collaborate with a group called Code for Romania. Um, again, exploring the question of civic technology. Um, so just a bit about myself. Um, you know, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. I moved from Baltimore to Dayton, Ohio in the Midwest with my mom and sister. Um, and, you know, for me, and, and if many of you might be familiar with the black experience in America, um, but it's, a, it's an aspirational, a hopeful story. Um, when my mom moved from Baltimore, which is a black, uh, historically black town, um, to the suburbs of Springboro, Ohio, which is this kind of beautiful and perfect idyllic place, um, you know, that migration was really important in our family, of moving from a black town to a white town. Um, and, and this kind of frames my experience. Uh, in looking at Romania and Romania's kind of context um, and positionality in, in Europe. Um, and so that kind of East uh, versus West, that dichotomy, I think really drew me there and what it looked like to be from a place in Europe um, that may be overlooked or may be uh, wrongly stereotyped um, and, and has kind of a, um, a stigma about it. Um, and I think that was one reason that I chose to go to Romania because of that kind of dynamic. Um, and I wanted to explore more about what was it like to be from Eastern Europe? What, and what did that mean? And how could I, as a black person from America, connect to that or understand that? It seemed something, I couldn't quite put a, a finger on it, but something, it felt some kind of, it resonated with me, that dynamic. And so back to my family in Ohio, my mom moved, like, like many, many people in different generations, to, you know, to the north, um, away from oppression, away from um, lack of resources, away from uh, places that, that don't feel safe. Um, and, that, and, and we wanted to create a new life and, and, and we wanted to develop new tools to survive as black people in America. Um, and so I, as a, as a black man, went to an all white school, which uh, I was one of few black kids. And that was a very challenging experience because, you know, even if even though you might you may have moved to a new place, uh, you may have moved cities, you may be in a new environment, you still kind of carry the stigma of where you come from. And um, yeah, that really shapes my, 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 my perspective. I think I'm really, if any of you are familiar with uh, the work of W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, who looked at kind of the two-ness or the double consciousness of different minority groups or people who are not in the, in, in the majority, uh, whether that's racial, cultural, um, uh, identity-based, uh, other identity-based categories, that two-ness of having to see your own culture and the other culture, and then also see how the other culture might view you. So in Romania, I was very interested in understanding what it meant for someone to move from Romania to, uh, to Paris or London um, and be perceived and carry that perception and, and um, experience that and i think that's kind of, that was one big theme of my research was migration and of course we know that romania has uh one of the fastest growing and largest diasporas uh which is is, is really a, a coming out of a challenging history but also a really hopeful future and um how how we can stay connected even in a world where we're all 
separate in, in, in different places, how we build community and have family tie still back home. Um, and so all of that, I, I moved from those places and, um, and I then went to work in tech. And just to skip forward to all of this, I spent a lot of time working in, you know, in, in civic technology, and I came across a group called Code for Code for Romania, and I was really inspired by their work. And I met so many wonderful people, like Bogdan Ivanel, the co-founder, or Olivia Bereja, or or Donna Pascal, or Dragos Kostake, or Elisa Kosman, or Ina and Dan Dimitri, and so many others. Uh, kind of took me in. In, in the um, in the year uh, that I was in Romania, and I learned a lot about what how technology was being used to create new futures, to, to end corruption, and to empower people in Romania. Um, and that was really inspiring for me as a person of color coming from this American perspective. Um, I think I initially approached it from a place of challenge and trauma. I spent a lot of time with f following the work of, of uh, these civic technologists in, in Romania and, you know, all the folks I mentioned earlier and um, just had such a, a powerful experience learning about how to overcome a history. How can you deal with uh, a history and an on and a troubling ongoing present? I, I'm, you know, we all know about the collectifier. We all know about, about, about Romania's communist past. I, I learned so much from my friends that I met in Romania about that and how that really shaped in some part the future. And, um, and so looking at how technology was being used with Code for Romania uh, was really, really powerful to see again, like how can we improvise and adapt and overcome our histories um, to create a new future. Um, and so all of the work uh, that I learned about in Romania really I think helped inspire me to go back to the United States and look about how can we uh, fight fight for justice uh, in, in, in the racial fight for justice or in the gender fight for justice or um, in, you know, all, all justice is connected. And I feel like the work that I followed in Romania really helped me understand that from an international context and how, again, people can re, retool things uh, to empower people um, in the, the local community, I think really, really inspired me. So I just really, really want to just thank all of the my my wonderful friends that I that I had the chance to connect with. And I know I need to. I'm so behind on emails and Instagrams and all the different connection methods uh, to um, those. You know, all of my friends that I mentioned earlier. Um, but I'm just so thankful for that because coming to Romania as a person of color really helped me find my own power and my own voice and to also understand what it looked like for other people uh, to go through a similar but, 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 a, but a very different process as well about, again, improvising, uh, adapting, overcoming, um, and coming from a place that people might overlook and um, I think in general, it's really important to go to places that are on the periphery, go to places that people might have a negative notion about, because in those places is actually so much wisdom and uh, deep history um, and, and perspectives that are, that are, that are wisdom. Um, and so I think I really found that in my travels in Romania and in, in discussions with my friends there. So um, I think I'll end it there, um, again, just emphasizing the power of peripheral spaces. And I think Romania is one of those places. And I think I'm so lucky to have gotten the opportunity to spend time um, with people in Romania, because uh, I think it really helped me grow and learn and find new strategies for self-empowerment and community empowerment. So I hope I'll end, end there. Appreciate the extra time. Sorry for all my bumbling around, um, but thank you.